I'm, I'm disgusted. Um, and honestly, I, I'm pissed off at the remarks that she had to say. Strong reactions this morning in Uvalde. We hear from parents of victims of the school shooting voicing concerns about Uvalde CISD hiring a former DPS trooper who was at Robb Elementary. The tragic end to a search for an eight month old and her family in California. I may be seized Jay O'Brien where the investigation heads now. And a quick look out there with live cam still nice 64 degrees. It still feels like October. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, October 6th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week so far. Still enjoying the weather? I am. Yes, very nice. 64 degrees, starry night. The moon was setting as we were coming into work this morning. Beautiful <laughs> night. Very, very much so. Yeah, and the moon is only a couple of days away from being full. It's going to be full uh, on the 9th and... Whoop. Well, let's go here. There, oh, there I am. Okay. Um, but, you know, once again, just a smidge more humidity out there. Not bad. I still haven't picked up really? on it. Okay. No. Yeah, it's no. a, I know, trust you, though. It's just yeah. kind of coming up, you know, a little degree here and there. Still, still might need a jacket when you step outside this morning because we do have some temperatures down in the uh, 60s and 50s. Lots of clear skies out there. 64 in town, 62 Converse, Port SA, as well as some low 50s in parts of the Hill Country. So these numbers really haven't changed that much, maybe up a degree or two, but it's these numbers which think back to not too long ago, we had 40s and even a couple of 30s as far as these dew points that measure moisture in the atmosphere. Now we're up in the kind of getting toward the mid and upper 50s approaching that threshold number of 60. So it's not like it's going to be oppressively humid, but we'll just have enough to where you can kind of notice it. Uh, mold and ragweed are both on the low side throughout the rest of the day. Ozone Action Day in effect for the metropolitan area going up I-35 into Austin. 63 this morning, so we will drop down another degree, a couple of degrees here and there, clear skies. And we'll have a lot of sunshine first portion of the day. A few more clouds move in here and then a lot more in the way of clouds uh, about dinner time. And after that, we will still hit a high temperature of 88 degrees, so slightly on the above normal side. And get used to that because we're going to be staying upper 80s whereas this time of year should be mid 80s. So it is going to be on the warm side. Anything like rain to be squeezed out? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Justin is in here this morning. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Good morning, Mike. We actually have a couple incidents that we've got to get to early this morning. Uh, we're looking at Transguide here. We're not seeing much. This is I-35, but we know there's some slowdowns on I-35, and there's uh, a reason for that. We're just getting reports of a rollover near Topper Wine. This is northbound I-35. And this is going to start to cause some issues. So let's take a look at the map. And I think this uh, will tell us the story here. As we zoom in, it's right here where we're seeing that rollover. Now, right now, our traffic system is not showing any slowdowns. But I would imagine there may be, uh, depending on how many lanes get closed here uh, with this incident. And this, again, is uh, northbound I-35 where we're seeing this at this hour. On top of that, we have a vehicle fire. And that's happening at I-10 and Houston Street. Uh, last word that looked like they were closing some of this highway, so this may cause some issues too. This is eastbound on I-10, and uh, it sounds like the, there's quite a few units involved with this. So a couple of issues to be aware of if you're heading out early this morning, and we'll keep track of them and let you know how they evolve coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. We're following a developing story of Uvalde this morning. CNN is reporting that Uvalde CISD has hired a former DPS trooper who was at Robb Elementary during the school shooting. That report also says Crimson Elizondo is among the troopers under investigation for their actions or inactions on May 24th. As of this morning, Elizondo appears on the Uvalde CISD website. She is listed as a member of its seven-person police department. However, body camera video from May 24th appears to show Elizondo outside the school. CNN says she arrived just two minutes after the gunman went inside. These clips were released by Uvalde's mayor. She does not appear to have any body armor or long rifle. Body camera video also shows her inside the school during the 77-minute shooting. At one point, CNN says she can be heard saying, quote, If my son had been in there, I would not have been outside. I promise you that, end quote. Elizondo is reportedly one of seven DPS troopers referred to the Office of Inspector General. The official referral made in July says those officers were identified for, quote, actions which may be inconsistent with training and department requirements, end quote. DPS has not officially identified those other officers. 
Parents of the Robb Elementary victims are sharing their frustrations over Elizondo's hiring. A statement from the group, Lives Robbed, says in part, quote, her hiring puts into question the credibility and thoroughness of UCISD's HR and vetting practices, and it confirms what we have been saying all along. UCISD has not and is not in the business of ensuring the safety of our children at school. End quote. Now the statement goes on to call for the suspension of all UCISD officers pending an independent investigation. So this news comes as families continue to protest out the, outside the Uvalde CISD central office. Uzziah Garcia's guardian, Brent, Brett Cross, has spent the past week living outside the administration building. This morning, he's still there. I'm absolutely appalled. Um, I even asked the school board beforehand when they said that we were getting more officers in or there were going to be officers that were there on May 24th that were going to be patrolling and being around here. And they told me no. Our Katrina Weber is on her way to Uvalde this morning. She will have more information coming up in our later newscasts. Arrested and charged. Bear County deputies say they found the teen suspects accused of shooting and killing an innocent woman earlier this week during a drive by. Now, because the suspects are underage, deputies are not identifying them. The four year old who deputies think was the driver is charged with murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and evading arrest in a vehicle, along with unauthorized use of a vehicle. And the 15 year old who investigators say was a passenger is also facing murder and aggravated assault and evading arrest on foot. That shooting happened on Bald Mountain, the woman who lost her life was just 25 years old. Her name is Novita Brazil. New overnight in Thailand, more than 30 children were killed today when a gunman opened fire at a child care center in northeastern Thailand. Police say the shooting happened early in the afternoon. The attacker, 23 children, two teachers and a police officer. The Daily News newspaper reports the after leaving the scene, the attacker returned to his home and killed himself along with his wife and child. According to Thai media reports, the gunman also used knives in the attack. Also overnight, four members of family, including an eight-year-old girl, kidnapped from their business in Northern California, were all found dead. As ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, police say they have a suspect in custody, but the motive in this case is still not clear. Overnight, the tragic end to a frantic search for an eight-month-old and her family in California. Our worst fears uh, have been confirmed. Baby Aruhi Derry, her 27-year-old mother, Jocelyn Kaur, her 36-year-old father, Jasteep Singh, and 39-year-old uncle, Amandeep Singh, were allegedly kidnapped Monday in Merced County, California. Found dead Wednesday night, investigators say, by a farm worker in a rural area. Horribly horribly senseless as to what happened here. We don't know motivation yet, but we are uh, making a determinant factor on that, and the investigation now is going to uh, pursue a full conviction. The sheriff's office releasing this surveillance video they say shows the kidnapping outside the family's trucking business. Investigators say the victim's ATM cards were used later. And yesterday, authorities arresting 48-year-old Jesus Manuel Salgado. The sheriff telling ABC News that his family turned him in. Authorities say Salgado attempted suicide before he could be arrested. He was taken into custody, now in critical condition. I'm just livid inside because this was completely and totally senseless. And last night, the Merced County Sheriff left open the possibility that a second person could be connected to this crime, but said investigators have no specific evidence of that yet. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Other news this morning, the OPEC Plus Alliance of Oil Exporting Countries that includes Russia has decided to sharply cut production to support sagging oil prices. Starting in November, energy ministers will cut production larger than, than, larger than expected, 2 million barrels a day. It's a move that could deal the struggling global economy another blow and raise gas prices for U.S. drivers. The White House called the decision short-sighted. Experts predict the move could cost an extra 10 to 20 rather 10 to 30 cents a gallon in price increases. This morning, North Korea has launched two ballistic missiles into its eastern waters. That's after the U.S. redeployed an aircraft carrier in response to the North's earlier launch of a nuclear-capable missile over Japan. The USS Ronald Reagan is now in the waters east of South Korea 
The Japanese Prime Minister says North Korea's continued launches were absolutely intolerable. 440, 64 degrees. And after Oklahoma got pounced on by TCU last week, could the Texas Longhorns be taking their Red River rivalry opponent too lightly? We're going to hear what Coach Steve Sarkeesian has to say about his players' readiness this week. Outside with live cam, perfect fall morning. Yeah, maybe a little bit more humid out there this morning. It's early. You're watching GMSA. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dak Prescott did not practice with the Cowboys yesterday. According to the NFL's official practice report, he is still working his way back from surgery on his thumb on his right throwing hand. He fractured in the first game of the season. Meanwhile, Cooper Rush is looking to go 4-0 this season when the Cowboys travel to L.A. to face the Rams. Kickoff in L.A. is Sunday at 325 and KSAT 12 Sports will be there. The UTSA Roadrunners have a dominating offense this season. Following their 45-30 victory on the road against Middle Tennessee, the Roadrunners are tied for the lead in the FBS when it comes to passing offense that averages 365.8 yards per game. Got to have that point eight in there. Now they face Western Kentucky, the team they had to beat to win their first conference USA title. Stephanie Cernas, Texas Longhorns are preparing for the annual Red River rivalry when they face OU in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, right in the middle of the Texas State Fair. It's still a question as who will be starting at quarterback. Meanwhile, the Sooners have struggled in the Big 12 so far with two losses, including last week's 54, rather 55-24 route of TCU, making this game uh, a trap game for Texas. It got beat by TCU. So is head coach Steve Sarkeesian worried his players are taking OU too lightly? I don't know how we could ever think to do that. Um, this this rivalry, this game, um, and what it all stands for, and the way these two teams plays have have played in this game for decades. Uh, we know more than ever uh, we're we're going to get the best version of them. Uh, we need to make sure that they get the best version of us. Uh, they're a very talented team. They're an extremely well coached team. Hey, we, we go through ebb and flows of a season, new coaching staff, new team. I w we went through it too, but uh, this team's really good and they play really hard and they're really well coached and uh, we have our work cut out for us and we need to play a very good football game to be victorious. You can watch the Texas OU game live on KSAT 12 this Saturday with kickoff set for 11 a.m. How are you feeling about Texas OU this weekend? Uh, stressed. Stressed? <laughs> I can't tell. You're still smiling. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it'll be all right, but no, I'm not going to place any bets. Okay. That's not me. Good to know. <laughs> 445, 64 degrees. And still ahead, the clock is ticking to score a holiday airline ticket before those prices go up. We're going to tell you about the promotions you're going to see in the next couple of weeks. 448, it is way too early for traffic troubles, but they do happen from time to time. That's right, I-10, kind of a big mess right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin Horn. We do have uh, parts of I-10 closed, and as we look at Trans Guide here, we, we, can, uh, we can see that uh, it looks like the, the westbound portion of I-10 is closed. Uh, the eastbound portion appears to be reopening here as we're seeing some cars coming through. And I think you can hear me a little bit better now. You can see there's some cars coming through here on I-10. Uh, there's the closure there. It's the Houston Street Bridge. And it looks like the westbound side is closed. You're being forced to exit Commerce. So that's just one issue we have out there. I want to take you to another uh, at I-35 and Topper Wine. And let's see if I can get it pulled up here. This is where we're having also a rollover. And it looks like this is relegated to the side, so this isn't causing as many traffic issues, but I do want to alert you there along I-35. So let me show you the map, and you get a better idea of what's going on. So it's uh, right here along I-10 where we're starting to see those slowdowns, and it's uh, a vehicle fire is what's being reported, and SAPD is saying that yeah, they did close both sides of the highway at one point. It looks like one side, again, is reopened, but it's this westbound lane that's really starting to slow down. And it looks like everyone's being forced to exit commerce. So that's going to take you a little extra time until they can get this cleaned up. Uh, even if you're going eastbound, it's, it's still a, a pretty big slowdown. And we're going to start to see some more oranges and reds, I'm guessing, show up here. So if you're traveling along I-10, be aware of that. And then uh, we mentioned that issue up along I-35 
and topper wine. That's the other issue. But it looks like traffic is okay with this one. Again, it's this was off to the side. So uh, we'll keep tabs on this and keep you updated as the morning goes along, guys. That's a lot for early. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Not you, even Jeff. 5 a.m. yet. No. no kidding. All right, you were talking about it earlier. Beautiful moon, just a couple of days away from uh, being full. It's going to be full on the 9th. And yeah, it is in the, you know, it's going down. And as it approaches full moon, right when full moon, it rises just as the sun is going down. So you look to the west, beautiful sunset, and look to the east and see the, uh, the moon coming up. Uh, as far as sunset tonight, we are going to have more clouds with that. Now off to the east, hopefully uh, you'll get to see the, the moon come up. But uh, yeah, great looking picture. Thank you very much much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got uh, mostly clear skies right now. Nice morning, pleasant light jacket. Again, we've got some 60s, 50s around the area. Balverde 57, 55 Bernie stage. And we'll still drop down another notch or two, 64 here in town. These numbers are actually up. Here in town, the dew point, measure of moisture, the way I describe it is up five degrees compared to this time yesterday. Seven in New Braunfels. Not everybody's up that much, but just a few notches here and there. So you, you just kind of notice it. You know, it's not that real, real dry air when you step outside. Just a, a hint more humidity. And that is going to be the situation throughout the rest of the week, the weekend, and then going into the first part of next week. Lots of clear skies this morning, and we'll drop down to 63 degrees. Then warm up nicely, as has been the case the past couple of days. 75 at 1082 at noon. A few more clouds are then going to pop on in here. These high clouds that will be coming in here from the west. We will make it up to 88 for a high temperature later on today and late this afternoon and then going into dinner time, evening hours. That's when those clouds will continue to kind of move on in here which this model I think shows very well. So just after dinner time this evening, we have a lot of these high clouds hanging around here. And that's going to be the situation overnight. And then tomorrow morning, some of that uh, mixture of sunshine and clouds tomorrow. I'm kind of leaning toward the cloudier side. Now, notice how there's a couple little spots of green. Is there a chance for a stray sprinkly shower or two? Sure. Would you bet on it? Uh, uh it's just not that great of a chance at all for anything like uh, rain and a lot of it would probably evaporate before it ever reached the ground anyway 82 degrees today at noon sunny skies and then maybe one or two of those high clouds kind of forming up somewhat 88 at uh, about four or five o'clock this afternoon mostly sunny skies with more of those high clouds moving on in here more overnight then 86 tomorrow notice how we're going to be staying in the upper 80s going in through next week. So that's going to be four or five, almost six degrees above normal. Low temperatures will still be a couple of notches above normal as well. So nothing too extreme, but just not that fall weather. Not yeah. fall, 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 yet. Not fall, fall, fall. You sound like <laughs> Coach Pop talking about the upcoming Spurs. Don't bet on us as far as rain goes. <laughs> yeah, that's like me with the Longhorns. I'm not going to bet on them. Not going to bet weekend. on them either. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Your own team? No, There's I want them to win, but I'm not going to yeah. bet on them. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm already going to. I don't want to be di double disappointed. There you go. <laughs> 453, 64 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers and hopefully you won't be disappointed. Pick three, 174, Fireball three, Daily four, th four, three, two, seven, Fireball six. It's tough to read them when Mike's covering up the screen <laughs> with both hands. Uh, cash five numbers, f just trying to be transparent. Cash five numbers, 4, 12, 13, 16, 30, Lotto Texas six, 31, 35, 39, 40, 52, and Powerball, he's left so we can see the numbers now. 26, 30, 33, 37, 62, Powerball 6, Power Play 2. If you mess up from here on out, it's our own fault. Mm -hmm. In this morning's GMA First Look, as the holiday travel season approaches, experts warn the clock is ticking to score a holiday ticket before prices soar. After about October 20th, we'll see airfare rise between $10 and $15 per day for each holiday. Domestic airfares already climbing. Thanksgiving flights averaging $281 round trip. That's a 25% increase over last year. Christmas even more expensive, $435 round trip, up a whopping 55% over 2021. Over the holidays right now, we're going to see about 5,000 less flights scheduled per day headed into Thanksgiving and Christmas. There are ways you can save. We'll see lots of promotions in the next two weeks to help travelers get better prices. And those prices won't stick around for long. And coming up at 7 a.m., more tips to save you big time on holiday travel. I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York.
Time check, 457, 64 degrees. Former Cowboys running back and now Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker still facing accusations that he paid for an abortion in 2009. Walker denies what happened. Why a new report may indicate otherwise. The Valley CISD has hired a former DPS trooper who was at Robb Elementary during the school shooting. What families are saying this morning about that news. And a quick look at the roads with Transguy, looking at some flashing lights out there at I-35 at Topper Line. Justin Horn is in this morning watching the roads. We'll be checking in with him very shortly. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I've just gotten nothing but the runaround. So, I mean, I, I told them I wasn't leaving and I'm not going to. This morning, parents Valdi school shooting victims react to the news that a former DPS trooper who was at Robb Elementary has been hired for the school police force. And as many as 60 shots ring out in a deadly east side shooting overnight, what San Antonio police are saying about who was shot. Outside with live cam this morning, generally clear skies drop down to the mid 60s here in town. We'll check on those Hill Country temperatures in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Thursday. It is October 6th. Happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, still nice and cool out there. Mike tells us there's a little bit of humidity in the air, but we haven't noticed yet. Not quite yet, but we'll go outside and check and come back in if you want. Okay. okay. Now, it's not like you're going to walk outside and your glasses fog up, anything like that. Just kind of comparing this morning to the past few mornings, the uh, humidity has just gone up, you know, just a hint each and every day. So you may kind of and notice it. it's not that real, real dry air that we had just a couple of days ago. 63 right now. That bottom number, 2.54, was down around the upper 40s, 50 yesterday. So, yes, it has gone up ever so slightly. And we're going to make it up to 88 later on this afternoon. The normal average high temperature is 86. And then that obviously will continue to drop down over the next couple of days. But those high temperatures will be staying up there in the upper 80s, even as we go through the weekend and go into next week. Yesterday, the aquifer dropped down three Three tenths of a foot allergens, both mold and ragweed dropped down from their previous day readings. All right, here's what it looks like in the water vapor imagery, the moisture mid upper levels of the atmosphere. As this loops back 12 hours, notice this darker shade, and that's why we had those just gorgeous blue skies yesterday. Now a little bit more in the way of moisture is coming in here aloft, so perhaps a slight milky shade to the sky. Then we're going to start to see this moisture really kind of come on in here, and so that's going to help out with a lot more in the way of some high clouds later on this after late this afternoon going into this evening. If you are heading out to the pumpkin again, pumpkin or pumpkin, which sounds better? Pumpkin patch. I like pumpkin. Um, pumpkin versus pumpkin. Whatever you want, pumpkin. <laughs> uh, like, you like that one, Justin? Anyway, uh, we're going to make it up to 82 degrees at noon, 87 then, 3 o'clock right after uh, school's out. And great day to head out to the pumpkin and or that large gourd patch, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll top off, like I said, at uh, 88 later on this afternoon. The man who's always having fun in a pumpkin patch, Mr. Justin Horn. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at traffic. We do have some issues out there, and I want to take you to I-10, and this is a camera at WW White, but we're looking back at the Houston Street Bridge, and it's right there at the top of your screen. You see the lights. We had a vehicle fire. My guess is that they're checking the integrity of this bridge now. If there's a vehicle fire, uh, they want to make sure that it is perfectly safe. So what is happening is that both sides of I-10 are being forced to exit and get off the freeway, and this is going to cause some backups. It already is. Uh, right now, we're seeing traffic come back on the ramp and get back on the freeway. So they're again avoiding the bridge there. Well, let's look at some of the incidents that we have and uh, we'll take you down to that spot. It is uh, right there as you're heading uh, eastbound on I-10 is where the vehicle fire was reported. But again, it's both sides of the freeway that are being forced to exit. They've got it shut down, SAPD does. So uh, you're gonna have to go around the Houston Street Bridge there. We'll continue to try to get some updates and uh, see if things improve, but in the meantime, Expect a slowdown. We've also got a, an accident here at I-35 and Topperwine. Uh, we can see that on Trans Guide as well, but it's off to the side. So this really isn't causing a lot of backups per se, but you will get some rubbernecking and some slowdowns, I would imagine, uh, if you're traveling uh, along I-35. So those are the two major incidents that we have at this hour. Uh, again, just be aware that I-10 going east, which coming out of downtown, is it's going to be uh, a problem here for a little while longer guys thank you justin 
We continue to follow a developing story out of Uvalde. CNN is reporting that Uvalde CISD has hired a former DPS trooper who was at Robb Elementary during the shooting. The report also says Crimson Elizondo is among the troopers under investigation for their actions or inactions on May 24th. As of this morning, Elizondo appears on the Uvalde CISD website. She is listed as a member of its seven-person police department. However, body camera video from May 24th appears to show Elizondo outside the school. CNN says she arrived just two minutes after the gunman went inside. The clips were released by Uvalde's mayor. She does not appear to have body armor or a long rifle. Body cam video also shows her inside the school during the 77-minute shooting. Elizondo is reportedly one of seven DPS officers referred to the Office of the Inspector General. The official referral made in July says those officers were identified for, quote, actions which may be inconsistent with training and department requirements, end quote. Now, DPS has not officially identified those officers. This news comes as families continue to protest outside the Uvalde CISD central offices. Uzziah Garcia's guardian, Brett Cross, has spent the past week living outside the building. This morning, he is still there. I've been out here for 192 hours, um, eight days. And my ask is simple. It's to suspend any officers that were there until the, an investigation is completed. Um, and I've just got... And meanwhile, families of the Robb Elementary victims continue to share their stories. The daughter of fourth grade teacher Eva Mireles is speaking out for the first time. When I heard that she jumped in front of her students, I think my first thought was, of course, of course she would. That's just her. That was just who she was. 23-year-old Addie Ruiz says her mother was a hero long before May 24th. Four months later, Ruiz is advocating for stricter gun laws in Texas. We have a crew on the way to Uvalde. We will update you on the story throughout the morning right here on GMSA. New this morning, San Antonio police say nearby officers heard at least 50 to 60 gunshots during a deadly shooting on the city's east side overnight. Happened just before one this morning near the intersection of East Houston and North Polaris near North New Braunfels. SAPD says a young man in his teens or 20s was found in the middle of the street with gunshot wounds. He was pronounced dead at the scene by EMS. So far, SAPD says they don't have any witnesses or suspect information. This morning, we know what led up to a large police presence at the Alazon Apache courts yesterday. San Antonio police say it started with an attempted traffic stop and stolen car. The driver took off, but San Antonio Police Department's helicopter found it at the Alazon courts. Officers dressed in tactical gear ordered eight people out of an apartment. Our cameras were there as they walked out with their hands above their heads. We are blurring their faces because some of them were eventually released. And this morning, we are still working to find out how many people were taken into custody, their charges, what police found, and who owns the stolen vehicle. New development overnight in the abortion controversy surrounding former Dallas Cowboys star, now Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker, who supports a ban on abortion. As ABC's J. O'Brien explains, we are learning more about the woman who claims that Walker paid for her abortion more than a decade ago. This morning, a new report about the woman who accuses Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker of paying for her abortion. The Daily Beast now reporting the woman who made the claim is also the mother of one of Walker's four children. ABC News has not independently verified the allegations in the report, which first quoted an anonymous woman on Monday claiming Walker urged her to have an abortion in 2009. She reportedly provided a receipt for the procedure along with a $700 check allegedly from Walker to cover the cost. Walker denied that report, calling it a flat out lie and saying he had no idea who the woman could be. According to the Daily Beast, you know this woman, even though her identity is not known. Do you, do you have you figured out who it is? Uh, not at all. And that's what I, I hope everyone can see. It's sort of like everyone is anonymous or everyone is leaking and they want you to confess to something you have no clue about. The woman's identity is still not being revealed. But now she tells the Daily Beast that she and Walker had a child after the abortion, saying she is stunned by Walker's denial. Overnight, Walker released a news statement saying, as I have already said, there is no truth to this or any other Daily Beast report. 
The former NFL star running as a Republican anti-abortion candidate is locked in a tight race with Georgia's Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. The outcome of next month's race could determine which party controls the Senate. Walker has reportedly raised $500,000 since denying the initial report Monday, and some Republican leaders are rallying behind him. Herschel's going to win, and they're starting to see it. Walker is scheduled to make a public appearance this morning in Georgia as part of his bus tour across the state. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. A reminder, KSA is hosting a community town hall today at 2 p.m. for domestic violence. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we will be talking about the connection between domestic violence and mass shootings. The town hall will be moderated by KSA anchor Courtney Friedman and hosted by the Collaborative Commission of Domestic Violence. The town hall will be streamed on the KSA Plus app. Right now it's 510, 63 degrees. And making it easier to tweet how a new feature on Twitter is letting users get a little more creative. Citizens Gray Forrest talking about the Bear County Sheriff's Office taking over policing duties of their town. What the mayor says led to the departure of their police chief. And taking a look outside with live cam. Mike says there's a trace of humidity in the air, but it's still 63 degrees out there. You might need a light sweater in this area. We'll be right back. 514 this morning, the mayor of Gray Forest in Northwest Bear County says a philosophical difference in leadership led to the departure of the town's police chief. Since then, the rest of the paid officers have left the job as well. Bear County Sheriff's deputies are now covering those calls. The mayor says there are interim administrative staff and over 40 reserve officers as well. People living in the town of 500 are reacting to the news saying having full time officers is what's kept their town's crime rate low would love for there to be dedicated officers in the city of Gray Forest who are here, who get to know the community as these previous officers did. Now, others who support the mayor say they applaud her efforts to get more accountability from the police department on how money is spent and how resources are used. Now, 515, 63 degrees. And how Spotify is getting better at detecting what it says is harmful content and misinformation in its podcasts. Sony launches the new PlayStation Stars loyalty program here in North America. We'll tell you how gamers can benefit. Join Planet Fitness today and get more epic energy and better sleep with tons of equipment in our clean and spacious clubs. Join for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, October 14th. I recommend Nature Made Vitamins because I trust their quality. They were the first to be verified by USP, an independent organization that sets strict quality and purity standards. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended vitamin and supplement brand. And I can't fight this feeling anymore. Whenever heartburn strikes, get fast relief with Tums. It's time to love food back. Better skin from your body wash? Try Olay Body Wash with skincare super ingredient collagen. Olay Body Wash hydrates for healthier looking skin in just 14 days. From dry and dull to firm and radiant. With Olay Body, I feel fearless in my skin. Welcome back. We are still tracking that incident along I-10 where both sides of the freeway now are closed due to a vehicle fire. At least that vehicle fire happened a little bit earlier, but they're checking the integrity of the Houston Street Bridge. We're looking at I-10 and WW White camera here, so we're looking back to the west, and it's up here right there where that, the Houston Street Bridge is, and there are still uh, police there, and they're, again, they're checking that bridge. So both sides are being forced to exit to the service roads and go through the light there at, at Houston. So that's going to cause some backups. And you can see here on the top of your screen that traffic is very slow there on the service road. So expect some delays. Uh, we can see that here on the map. It's right here where we have those issues, right before you get to 410. And there are slowdowns in both directions now. And this likely picks up through the morning. The question will be, how long is it closed? And we do not know the answer to that. It could be a while longer, depending on how bad that fire was and what that bridge looks like at this point. Uh, but again, just know that you're going to exit onto the service road and have to uh, go through the lights there at Houston Street. There, there may be police sort of directing traffic, but uh, it will cause uh, a slowdown. We'll continue to keep you updated on that incident throughout the morning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justin. I love how these 
guys are all dressed all up. All dressed up. <laughs> this picture got so much attention from Stephanie. <laughs> So cute. Dogs in tuxedos. Royce oh. and Zoe ready for Halloween. Not ready for Halloween, ready for the ball. Right? You know, yes. we do a little All formal, dressed up. Formal gala, so. yeah. Very formal. Adorable. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Scan the QR code and uh, send in some of the pictures of your dogs, be it formal or casual, whatever the case may be, and or any other KSAC Connect pictures. This is looking uh, kind of down to the uh, south, to almost southwest. There are the smokestacks over there at the quarry. And as you can see, traffic there on 281 is moving along very well. Nice morning, lots of clear skies out there and temperatures. We are in the uh, mid 60s here in town. Low 50s parts of the hill country going to drop down to 63 degrees. Lots of clear skies, lots of sunshine this morning. 80 at 11 o'clock, 82 at noon. Then we're going to start to see now there may be kind of a milky shade to the sky and then a few more high clouds starting to kind of move on in here and they will continue to build in once we get in toward late afternoon dinner time. 85, 88 degrees, pardon me for a high temperature today and then more clouds as we go on into the evening hours and then we'll keep a lot of those high clouds around throughout the day tomorrow. A few of them over the weekend. Quick check of the tropics. So tropical Depression number 12, that's just out there. It's probably going to fizzle out into to nothing. Still watching this batch of clouds right here that has moved uh, just about into the, the Caribbean. It does have a good chance of developing into a tropical system, but it uh, the forecast right now continues to take it just about straight to the west and move on into Central America. So that will not have any impact on our weather. What's going on for us? If we go on into the kind of long term, there we're going to have a lot of clear skies and then some of those high clouds come on in today. Now notice how there's a couple of spots where, you know, one or two areas of green here or there. Is there a chance for a shower maybe well out to the west or to the southwest? Sure, doubtful though, and a lot of, if anything falls, a lot of it's uh, probably gonna be evaporating before it would ever reach the ground. We will have uh, sort of partly cloudy skies on Saturday, mixture of sunshine and clouds, about the same thing on Sunday, and then same thing going on into the first part of next week. Notice though, there's little spots of green, but not anything as far as any big, big, rain events coming on in here. Latter part of next week, um, is it encouraging? Possibly, but again, this is not to be wishy-washy about it, but there's just nothing even down the road where you look at it and go, okay, this is gonna be a great rain chance. Nothing right now. 82 degrees at uh, noon, sunny skies. The high clouds continue to thicken up throughout the day. 88 high temperature today. So we will still be just a little bit on the uh, above normal side. That's going to be the trend. Very consistent weather really all the way through the weekend and next week. High temperatures, four or five degrees above normal. Low temperatures about two, three degrees above normal. And uh, more clouds tomorrow, a few of them over the weekend. We wouldn't blame you if you completely take rain out of the forecast. And then if it happens, you could say, surprise. Hey, yeah. if I was wrong on that count. Yes. But I would take it. I mean, that, that would be fantastic, yeah. but doesn't look like it. Unfortunately. Doesn't look good yet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 523, 63 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers 174, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 4327, Fireball 6. Cash 5 numbers 4, 12, 13, 16, 30, Lotto Texas 6, 31, 35, 39, 40, 52 and Powerball 26, 30, 33, 37, 62. Powerball 6, power, power play 2. Good luck from everybody at GMSA. In today's Tech Bytes, an upgrade to Twitter. The site is now allowing users to post images, videos, and GIFs within a single tweet. They're calling them mixed media tweets. Twitter says users can see the different media types in a tweet all at once, unlike on Instagram. Spotify has purchased a tech company that it says will help weed out hate speech and misinformation. The company, called Kinzin, uses software and human knowledge to identify what it calls potentially dangerous content. Sony has launched its new PlayStation loyalty program in North America. It's called PlayStation Stars, and gamers who sign up can earn digital collectibles, free games, and store credit by taking part in certain campaigns. You must have a PS4 or PS5 to rack up points. Personally, I have Nintendo. Nothing against PlayStation, it was just time for a Switch. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. That was pretty good. B plus, yeah. A minus. <laughs> 527, 63 degrees, glad you're with us. And coming up, experts predict you could soon be paying up to 30% more per gallon at the pump. We're going to tell you what else could affect your wallet, thanks to a decision by an alliance of oil exporting countries.
What blood type are you? Most are either A, B, AB, or O positive or negative. What scientists are saying about the new type of blood group they have just discovered. And next time you're thirsty, how about some liquid death? Why this canned water company is becoming a big deal in supermarkets and convenience stores. This morning, the OPEC Plus Alliance of Oil Exporting Countries is set to cut production. We'll tell you how many more cents per gallon you could soon be paying at the pump. And a quick look out there with live cam this morning. Enjoy that 63 degrees, nice and cool. You will definitely need a sweater if you're waiting at a bus stop. Welcome to your Thursday. It is October 6th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll get to weather in just a minute. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin Horn right now. A lot of problems on the road. Well, it's just one big one, and that is along I-10, where we've had a complete closure of the freeway here. So we're looking at I-10 and WW White with this camera, and this is the eastbound lanes here. So you'll notice they're coming off the service road and getting back on the freeway. It's up here, kind of at the top of your screen. I know it's hard to see, but you'll notice some flashing lights there. The bridge is closed, and that's because there was a vehicle fire earlier, and they're checking the integrity of the bridge to make sure it is safe. So in the meantime, both sides of the freeway are being forced to exit. You see the slow going of traffic there on the service road, and I believe that's the westbound portion here of I-10. Uh, either way, uh, know that this is going to be a big slowdown and probably a big issue going forward, especially as traffic begins to pick up. Let me show you where this is on the map, and it is uh, I-10 right here. That vehicle fire was actually in the eastbound lanes, but um, again, both sides shut down. The vehicle fire was uh, right there near the Houston Street Bridge near the AT&T Center. So if your travels take you along I-10 there, be aware. We're also getting word of an accident or a crash, I should say, uh, Thousand Oaks and Wetmore. That's off the major freeways, though. That, that could cause a few delays. We'll continue to keep you updated on this problem. If it persists, again, expect more traffic over the next couple of hours, guys. Thank you very much, Justin. All right, and take a look outside. Here we are looking from uh, the airport down. There's the uh, smokestacks over there at the quarry and uh, even a couple of stars out there. So lots of clear skies right now and temperatures. Yeah, like Steph was talking about, light jackets, a pretty good idea. Once again, we're at 63 degrees. We still have that number below 60, the dew point temperature, but it has each and every day the past few days, it's come up couple of degrees, two, three or so. And it's not as though you walk outside and you're, you know, you hit humidity, but you just sort of feel this to uh, just kind of smell a little extra humidity out there this morning. Mold and ragweed are both on the uh, the low side and uh, yeah, clear, very pleasant, coolish. 50s in the hill country again, and then plenty of sunshine to start off the day. Then some clouds are going to work their way in here. We are going to be, excuse me, upper 80s. There's a misprint right there. <laughs> Cover that one up, not upper 90s today, but we are going to be on the warm side of things. Some clouds this weekend, again, upper 80s. That's going to be the trend all the way through, even into the first part of next week. We'll have a lot more in the way of clouds tomorrow and then just a sort of back and forth over the weekend. More sunshine and still it is going to be on the warm side. Both the highs and the lows are going to be above their respective normals. Rain chances, is there anything out there? We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A warning. Some viewers may find our next story disturbing. This morning, a 17 year old shot by a San Antonio police officer is still recovering while the officer who shot him is out of a job. It happened Sunday in the parking lot of a McDonald's off of Blanco Road near West Avenue. The public, including people who know the teen, are getting their first look at body cam video. Probationary officer James Brennan, after only seven months on the job, has been fired for the shooting of Eric Cantu. The police chief said Brennan did not follow protocols. The teen's former supervisor at a wash tub location watched the video for the first time with KSAT. He looks scared. He looks terrified. Uh, he doesn't know what's going on. Like he was just in his car eating. That right there, uh, just, that personally didn't look right to me. The former supervisor says during the three-month period they worked together, his impression of Kantu was that he is respectful and hardworking. Gas prices are likely going up in the coming months. You probably noticed they have started to rise slightly. And now the oil producing countries in OPEC Plus, including Russia, have voted to reduce production in November. ABC's Rhiannon Alley reports what that could mean for American consumers. This morning, new concerns about gas prices spiking once again. OPEC Plus, a group of oil producing nations led by Russia and Saudi Arabia, is cutting production by 2 million barrels per day to boost prices. 
That small reduction could lead to big increases in energy costs, including for gas and home heating. It likely means an impact at the pump of anywhere from 10 to 30 cents a gallon. The south and the northeast are expected to be hit the hardest. And it just feels like you're just caught under a wave that's bigger than you have any control over. Gas prices in the U.S. were already rising due to high demand. The national average hitting $3.83, a five-cent increase from just last week. And a more dramatic increase in California, where prices now average $6.42 a gallon, up 97 cents in two weeks, due in part to temporary refinery issues. <sighs> Meanwhile, this year could be one of the most expensive holiday travel seasons ever. Thanksgiving flights are averaging $281 round trip, a 25% increase from last year. And flights around Christmas? Even more expensive, averaging $435, 55% higher than last year. Experts say travelers should book their holiday flights soon in the next two weeks. After about October 20th, we'll see airfare rise between $10 and $15 per day for each holiday. Those holidays will peak at over $500. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal reports the Biden administration is preparing to ease sanctions on Venezuela to resume oil exports. The proposed deal would require the Maduro government to resume talks to holding free elections. Rihanna Nally, ABC News, New York. Over to Florida now, a man is now charged with using his nearly two-year-old son as a human shield while trying to evade arrest. The man holding his 23-month-old is the child's father. He's now under arrest after being accused of kidnapping the boy from his girlfriend, the child's mother, and then using the toddler as a human shield. The affidavit says he had a firearm as he drove away from the home they shared, resulting in a high-speed chase that led to a fast food restaurant in Palm Coast, Florida. The toddler, identified only as BL, was not hurt. New details have been revealed about what the FBI seized at Mar-a-Lago in August. Now, according to a court filing, some of the documents included clemency requests, health care documents, IRS forms, and paperwork that appears related to the 2020 election. There are also communications about former President Trump's business and connections and documents related to legal disputes. Meanwhile, the special master appointed by a federal judge still has to look through that material. Do you know your blood type? Scientists say they've discovered a new group of blood types that you may need to be aware of in rare occasions. The new group is called the ER blood group. According to the journal Blood, there are a total of five ER antigens in this group based on genetic variations. The blood type can cause immune cells to attack mismatched cells, which has happened in other cases where blood types are incompatible. The ER antigen was discovered years ago, but the study is the first to describe different mutations of the antigen. Experts say while it may be rare, it could be important for physicians and nurses to pay attention if they're having trouble diagnosing their patient. And time now, 538 and 63 degrees for now. How about some liquid death? Why this unique <laughs> water company is now raking in millions of dollars. Interesting. And taking a look outside with live cam, starting your day at 63 degrees. Nice and cool out there. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 541. In your morning consumer headlines, Wall Street is hoping to rebound today after stocks closed slightly lower yesterday. The sluggish day follows large gains earlier in the week. New economic data showed private sector jobs were hiring at a solid pace. That led some investors to worry the Federal Reserve might continue raising interest rates and hurl the economy into a recession. Dow lost 42 points to closed at 30,273. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 also lost ground. Liquid death may not sound like the wisest branding choice for a beverage, but it turns out it was a brilliant move. The Liquid Death canned water company sells water in 16-ounce beer cans and is approaching a $1 billion valuation. Since its 2019 launch, it has had explosive growth due in part to loyal fans, unique packaging, and subversive marketing. That includes a recent expansion into flavored seltzer with flavors like mango chainsaw and severed lime. Liquid Death says it's on track in $130 million in revenue this year, nearly triple last year's revenue. Okay, time for check is 542, still 63 degrees. And a cute.
Pet standing by next from the San Antonio Humane Society. Stay with us. Look at the little puppy. I All right. Know. And Trans Guide right now, Justin has been tracking some incidents this morning. Big one right now is uh, over on I-10. We still see some flashing lights out there. Traffic might be moving, but we'll talk to Justin coming up. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome our lost loved ones back to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each has a specific purpose. The origins of Pan de Muerto can be traced back to Mesoamerica, when the Aztecs would place food offerings at tombs. This is believed to nourish the souls on their journey to the living. There are many variations of pan de muerto. Some loaves are made to look like the human body, others are made to look like bones or skulls. They are often flavored with orange blossom and topped with sugar or sesame seeds. You can place pan de muerto on your ofrenda along with the rest of your loved one's favorite foods. Okay. Not to talk about somebody's little <laughs> belly, but look at the belly on this little baby. This girl is only, Lucy, two you said? Two months old. Two months old. Yeah. So she's going to be a big one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, gorgeous coat. Like Who's face. this girl? This is Wow. So this is um, a little baby that came in with her siblings. They were all named after their Jersey Shore cast. <laughs> You can name if you want to. <laughs> yeah, so she'll probably need any name. But she's just really sweet, little pity mix. Um, so beautiful. And as you can see, very strong. She's going to be a big girl. She's going to need lots of playtime and running around. This will be the perfect one, as I say, in the backyard, tennis ball and kids. And yeah, this is your walking partner, your jogging oh, partner. Oh, yes. When she yes. gets bigger. And she take up a lot of room on the couch, too. Yes, and lots of snuggles, too. Oh, my goodness. What you yes. got going on this week? So we still have a few more days left for our Empty the Shelter adoption event so $25 for adult dogs and cats excluding ambassador pets who are one year and older so come on out visit us and we also have our volunteer orientation coming up on October 12th so we are always looking for volunteers that help us take care of our beautiful pets and we are also asking for some donations so we are needing some long uh, page newspapers and some wet kitten food for our little kitten fosters okay well uh, newspapers you know just you can drop them off there and as far as the the kitten food Food, Amazon wish list. Oh, that's the best Simplest way. Thing. Yes, gets delivered right to our doors. And everything they need saves everybody a trip and goes right to them. So if you'd like more information on all those things, don't forget volunteer uh, hours for, oh, for teens. Yes. If you need those for school, you can Definitely. get them there. 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 at the San Antonio Humane Society. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Oh, look at the way she was looking at Mike. Uh, no. Little Jay. Wow. So cute. I, mean, I bet it's hard not to take them all home, Mike. Yes. He says yes. yes. Very much so. <laughs> 547 right now. Let's go ahead and check back with Justin. Kind of slow going still there at I-10. Well, yeah, it's, it's early, so we don't have huge, huge delays. But they're going to start stacking up here soon. We know how this how this works, right? Next By next hour, we're going to see a lot more delays if the freeway stays closed. And that's the issue this morning. I-10 is closed, both eastbound and westbound, at Houston Street. And that's because of a vehicle fire earlier. We're, we're ordering some new details. It was actually an accident. The the uh, car ended up between both the eastbound and westbound lanes in the uh, overpass area, caught fire, and now authorities have to check the integrity of the overpass. we got to make sure it's safe before other people uh, cross over that bridge. So that's the issue. And you can see that all uh, traffic is being forced to exit to the service road. So very slow going there. That's the westbound lanes. And then on the eastbound, this is traffic coming back on the on-ramp here to get back on the freeway. So let's look at the map. And it's right there, Houston Street Bridge. This is showing some slowdowns. I would imagine it's going to get a little bit worse here pretty soon. You're going to start to see some reds maybe on top of these oranges, which would indicate some very slow going. So you're going to want to avoid this area if you can. There's some alternate routes, uh, as you know, as you, you go down I-10 here. You can get around this pretty easily, but you're going to want to plan ahead. Uh, with this being uh, an issue, and we don't know how much longer I-10 is going to be closed down, but we'll let you know if anything changes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Thank Back you. to that little puppy, Justin said that that thing's going to be adopted, the little Jay Wow. Yes, before like that. Show. Yeah. I'm sure. Super but, cute. And and poor Lucy, because we, we recorded two of those, and there were two sisters, and those just, I mean, they were 
there were some little lungs of dogs, and she's like, yeah. her arms are kind of <laughs> little, little chunks. Big, yeah, little chunks, little big puppies. So, okay, here you go, Jacob and Winston. Perfect. Who who's your favorite, Batman or Robin, or Batman or uh, Superman? I don't want to pick. Mm. What? Batman, not the dog. I mean, just in general. <laughs> not the dog. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Batman. Guy. Batman. Yeah. Batman. I'm Batman. Sure, Batman. There. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Superman. Sorry, Jacob. <laughs> uh, send in pictures of uh, your pet. Let me go back and, uh, yeah, just scan that QR code and send in some uh, KSAT Connect pictures there. So thank you very much for that uh, picture. Nice view out there. we got a lot of clear skies as of right now. Uh, sunset tonight. We are going to have a few more high clouds hanging around here, so it may not be quite as impressive. It's going to uh, about quarter after 7. Now, one week from now, we lose about 8 minutes and then continue. Continue. So by the 20th, the sun's going to be setting right before 7 o'clock. And then as we approach the end of the month, it will be setting about uh, almost 10 till 7. And of course, not long after that, we get to turn the clocks back to, as my mom puts it, God's time by the first weekend of November. All right, we've got a lot of clear skies around here. We're going to have a lot of sunshine. going to be a good looking sunrise this morning. And we'll warm up quickly as we have the past few days. 82 already at noon, and we are going to make it up to 88 for high High temperature today. A lot of these high clouds will have a few of them coming in here this afternoon and then a lot more by late afternoon dinner time going into the evening hours. A lot of moisture coming in here from the, uh, the Pacific Ocean. Again, tropics. We had, of course, Ian, which wreaked havoc on Florida and out there in the uh, Caribbean, pardon me. We've got another disturbance, which Hurricane Center is looking at and says, yes, this is probably going to form up into a tropical system. But again, this is working its way straight to the west, so it's not going to have any impact on our weather whatsoever. High clouds continue to kind of move in here later on tonight. We'll have a lot around tomorrow and some sunshine thrown in, smattering kind of a back and forth sunshine clouds mixed together over the weekend and then going into the first part of next week as well. But notice how with those clouds, no rain. If there is a sprinkle, there may be one or two amount to the west. Probably even going to evaporate. It's not even hardly even worth a mention of it. 82 sunny skies today at noon. Again, a few more high clouds. School continue to sort of move on in here and thicken up throughout the day. 88 at uh, 5 o'clock. And then tomorrow, 86 degrees. I think a few more high clouds will keep temperatures down a little bit. But then we sort of rebound to the upper 80s. And that's going to be the case into next week. 3, 4 almost five degrees above normal for high temperatures, lows about two, three degrees above their respective normal. So it is gonna be on the warm side. Yeah, it's, it's feeling pretty warm for mm -hmm. October, but that sets up for a nice fall, maybe later this month or early next month. Fingers crossed. Fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Fingers yes. crossed, yes. 552, 63 degrees on your Thursday. Let's go ahead and look at your winning lotto numbers. We have 174, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 4, 3, 2, 7, Fireball 6. Rest of your numbers, cash 5, 4, 12, 13, 16, 30, Lotto, Texas, 6, 31, 35, 39, 40, 52. Powerball is up to $378 million. Here are those numbers, 26, 30, 33, 37, 62. Powerball of 6, power play 2. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we'll have the latest on the concern about gas prices rising sharply again. California already grappling with record high prices, topping $8 a gallon. This morning, we're going to tell you how the White House is responding. And the surprise rust settlement between Alec Baldwin, the producers, and the family of Helena Hutchins, who was killed while filming the movie. Dan Abrams is going to break it down for us as he does so well. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Brad Pitt's rep is denying claims from Angelina Jolie about an alleged physical altercation on a private plane in 2016. In a lawsuit filed this week, Jolie claims Pitt choked one of their children and struck another in the face, allegations Pitt's rep calls completely untrue. The former couple is in a legal battle over Jolie's sale of her stake in their joint French winery, Chateau Miraval. She died, and she died, and that's that hurts me every day. Alec Baldwin and others have reached an undisclosed settlement in the wrongful death lawsuit from the family of Helena Hutchins, the cinematographer shot and killed with a prop gun on the set of Rust. 
the film will be completed and released, and Hutchins' widower will receive a portion of the profits. You ain't driving, are you? I steer a little, but the reindeer do most of the work. That's David Harbour as a butt-kicking Santa Claus in the upcoming action comedy Violent Night. This tough guy Santa springs into action on Christmas Eve to fight some bad guys who've taken a family hostage. Violent Night comes from the producers of John Wick and arrives in theaters December 2nd. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Well, in our next half hour, we have a live report from New Valley where outrage is pouring in from parents this morning following a controversial hire by the Uvalde CISD Police Department. Katrina Weber is standing by and she'll tell you who the newest officer is. And that person was there the day of the mass shooting. Transcad right now, we've had traffic, traffic issues pretty much since we went on the air this morning. Uh, Justin will have an update coming up after the break. I'm disgusted um, and honestly, I, I'm pissed off at the remarks that she had to say. Frustrations boiling over this morning in Uvalde after the district reportedly hires a former state trooper who was ro at Robb Elementary School during the mass shooting. More on why parents are so upset. Tragedy overseas this morning, at least 34 people, many of them children, are dead after a shooting at a daycare center in Thailand. Outside with live cam this morning, waiting for the sun to come up. It's been a beautiful night here in South Texas with the moon setting on the uh, opposite horizon. Uh, my, Justin Horn and Mike Ostrage are both here getting you updated on traffic and weather. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday, October 6th. Yeah, we made it to Thursday and it's been a really nice week. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike about that nice weather that we've been having. And he says overall temperatures are trending in the wrong direction uh -oh, over the next yeah. seven days. Yeah, we're, you know, it's not like we have any just real spikes in temperatures, but everything's just creeping up ever so slowly. like gas prices creeping back up. <laughs> Good example, yes, but nowhere near as high as the gas prices. Anyway, we've got a lot of clear skies out there. Going to have a, a sensational sunrise later on this morning. 63 and been holding fairly steady the past couple of hours. 56 Balverde, 55 Bernie stage, and then knock off another couple of notches up there going up in toward Comfort, 61 in Seguin. And the other thing with the humidity, it's not like it's high this morning, but if you walk outside, it's kind of like, yeah, there's just a little bit more compared to the past uh, couple of days, and that will also continue a very slow creep upward. Mold and ragweed are both on the low side. Both went down from the previous day's readings, and so this morning will stay fairly steady, fluctuated degree or two in the next couple of hours, and then warm up quickly again once the sun comes up. We'll have some high clouds out there, maybe a little milky shade of the sky in the first portion of the day, and then as we go into the afternoon hours, we'll make it up into the upper 80s and more in the way of some high clouds and then especially tonight 88 degrees is a couple of degrees above normal again that's going to be the trend going in through the weekend and into next week big question is there anything as far as any rain out there details in just a couple of minutes justin is in this morning with traffic duties still that big problem on 10 right it's still there and we just got a new shot here from chance guide so this gives us a little different perspective we're looking at i-10 and ww white and this is the backup that is caused by the closure of the freeway and you can see a sea of light that go back a long, long way. So traffic is really starting to stack up here because of this incident. But we're watching the uh, responders here, and it looks like maybe maybe they're trying to reopen this. I don't want to say that just yet, but you can see that uh, it looks like they're putting down some flares there. It does appear that we still have cars exiting off the freeway. So uh, that's the situation right now. I want to zoom in a little bit closer to this problem. And you can see the slowdowns now. So when you start to see this red color, that means we're coming almost to a stop here. And that is the case in both directions. We closed, or they closed the Houston Street Bridge because there was an accident earlier. Car went between the two sides of the freeway in the overpass there. Cop fire and that uh, uh, maybe affected the integrity of the bridge. And I think that's what they're checking out and that's why the freeway is closed. But they're having uh, vehicles exit both the service roads and then that takes a while to get around this incident. So I-10, it's just an area you want to avoid east of downtown near the AT&T Center. There's going to be some slowdowns for, I think, uh, a lot more time here, at least uh, going forward. We're going to have some updates for you. I'll let you know uh, how this evolves coming up, guys.
Thank you, Justin. Our top story this morning, parents in Uvalde have been using words to show their anger in response to the actions of the school district, but today they plan to use their bodies. They will be staging a protest at the administration office. Katrina Weber is live in Uvalde with that story. Katrina, we understand this has to do with the hiring of a new member of the Uvalde CISD Police Department. Well, that's right. Uh, this group includes parents whose children were killed in that Rob Elementary School shooting back in May. Now, we understand that they are going to be out here this morning blocking all the entrances to that school administration building, showing that they are upset and not going to take this latest hiring by the school district. Now, this uh, specifically, they are upset and outraged about reports that a woman named Charisma Elizondo has joined the school police department. According to a CNN report, Alessandro, who was captured on body cam video that day, is a former DPS trooper who was at Robb Elementary the day of the massacre. She reportedly also is one of seven troopers under investigation for not responding properly during that shooting, which left 19 students and two teachers dead. Now, this hiring is being seen by the parents as adding insult to injury. Many of them have been showing their outrage on social media and saying this is proof that the school district does not care about them at all. Now, as I said, they plan to do more this morning with that protest where they're going to block these entrances. Now, so far, we haven't seen uh, really anyone make their presence known. I've seen a couple of vehicles drive in there. We've also been trying to get a hold of one of the parents who has been in contact with us by phone, but so far we have had no luck. We hope to talk to him pretty soon and then bring you some of that information a little bit later on in this broadcast. Reporting live in Uvalde, Katrina. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Staying in Uvalde, it's been almost a month since a separate shooting there. Two teens were shot at Uvalde Memorial Park and four people were arrested in the case. This morning, victims' families are speaking out. Irene Munhia is the mom of one of the victims. 18-year-old Bruce Brown is her adopted son. He was shot in the chest in what police are calling a gang-related shooting. Now his mom is calling for change. Get the story straight. You know, I'm here to say my son is not a, he's not gang related. He's not a gang member. None of that. After several days in the hospital, her son is home recovering. She's asking for healthy activity so kids stay out of trouble. At a previous city council meeting, Mayor Don McLaughlin announced plans to build a youth and family rec center and a boys and girls club. New overnight in Thailand, at least 34 people are dead, including 22 children after a shooting at a daycare center. The suspected shooter is a former police officer. He also reportedly killed his wife and child, and then took his own life. It's unclear if the shooter and his family are included in the current death toll. This is a story we'll continue to follow closely, and we will bring you updates as soon as more information comes into our newsroom. An update now on a story we brought you yesterday here on GMSA. Bear County deputies say they found the two teen suspects accused of shooting and killing a woman during a drive-by. The shooting happened at a home on Bald Mountain near 1604 in Marbach. Because the suspects are underage, deputies are not identifying them. The 14-year-old who deputies think was the driver is charged with murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and evading arrest in a vehicle along with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. And the 15-year-old who investigators say was a passenger is also facing murder and aggravated assault and evading arrest on foot charges. The woman who lost her life was 25. Her name, Novita Brazil. The Bear County Sheriff's has released a statement about the $10,000 reward for finding Perla Huerta. She is accused of luring migrants onto flights that landed them at Martha's Vineyard. The reward is being offered by the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC. Yesterday, the organization mentioned that a Bear County grand jury is also wanting information. In a statement from BCSO, they say no findings of the investigation have been given to the district attorney's office, who would ultimately be the one to present that information to a grand jury. A major development overnight in the abortion controversy surrounding Georgia Senate account Herschel Walker, who supports a ban on abortion. We are learning more about the woman who claims that Walker paid for her abortion more than a decade ago. ABC's Jay O'Brien has more. This morning, a new report about the woman who accuses Georgia Senate candidate Herschel Walker of paying for her abortion. 
The Daily Beast now reporting the woman who made the claim is also the mother of one of Walker's four children. ABC News has not independently verified the allegations in the report, which first quoted an anonymous woman on Monday claiming Walker urged her to have an abortion in 2009. She reportedly provided a receipt for the procedure along with a $700 check allegedly from Walker to cover the cost. Walker denied that report, calling it a flat-out lie and saying he had no idea who the woman could be. According to the Daily Beast, you know this woman, even though her identity is not known. Do you, do you, have you figured out who it is? Uh, not at all. And that's what I, I hope everyone can see. It's sort of like everyone is anonymous or everyone is leaking and they want you to confess to something you have no clue about. The woman's identity is still not being revealed, but now she tells the Daily Beast that she and Walker had a child after the abortion, saying she is stunned by Walker's denial. Overnight, Walker released a new statement saying, as I have already said, there is no truth to this or any other Daily Beast report. The former NFL star running as a Republican anti-abortion candidate is locked in a tight race with Georgia's Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock. The outcome of next month's race could determine which party controls the Senate. Walker has reportedly raised $500,000 since denying the initial report Monday, and some Republican leaders are rallying behind him. Herschel's going to win, and they're starting to see it. Walker is scheduled to make a public appearance this morning in Georgia as part of his bus tour across the state. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 610, 63 degrees. And much more to come on GMSA, including a deadly overnight shooting on the city's east side. The questions police are still asking coming up a little later. Just ahead, we'll tell you why history was made with this rocket launch. And grab a light sweater or maybe just some warm coffee. It's a little chilly out there at 63 degrees, uh, but things will change this afternoon. We'll be right back. In your morning consumer news, trade around the world could be slowing down fast. The World Trade Organization now predicts next year's total imports and exports will rise just 1% compared to this year. Earlier forecasts have been for about a 3.4% increase. Year gas prices could be on the way up even more soon. OPEC now says it is aiming for oil production cuts of 2 million barrels a day. It is the biggest move since April of 2020 to drop prop up oil prices and the White House is reportedly preparing to ease sanctions on Venezuela. The Wall Street Journal says that would allow Chevron to start pumping oil again and possibly allow oil shipments to the U.S. and Europe. The cost of going electric is going up again if you want a new Ford truck. The starting price for the 2023 F-150 Lightning is now nearly $52,000. The second price hike in a matter of months. Ford is blaming rising costs for raw materials. And check this out, the U.S. rocketing into history. NASA and SpaceX launched four astronauts from Kennedy Space Center to the International Space Station yesterday. On board, Marine Colonel Nicole Mann, the first Native American woman to make it to space. And for the first time in 20 years time, a Russian cosmonaut launched from U.S. soil. Mann says everyone put politics aside and the common mission of space instantly united them. Our mission now at quarter past six is to check on your morning commute. How is it looking, Justin? Well, it's still not looking great on I-10. That's been the big problem spot this morning, really the one issue that we've had on the roadways. And I want to show you trans guide again here at I-10 and WW White. We've turned the camera around so you can see the backup. This is the result of that bridge closure. And you can see how far traffic is backed up here. And this just is getting worse with the uh, added traffic as we get later into the morning. In fact, cars now coming to a stop. So here is the issue. Uh, it is right here where we have the uh, Houston Bridge Street closure along I-10. The reason for that, car went in between eastbound and westbound lanes, uh, crashed, and then caught fire. So they've got to make sure that the bridge, the integrity of the bridge is intact, and they're still looking at that. So in the meantime, all traffic is being uh, exited onto the service road, and you've got to go around Houston Street here, and that goes for both eastbound and westbound. So you can see the backups here. When you start to see the red, that's pretty much traffic coming to a complete stop. And this is going to be here for a while longer. So expect some big time delays if you can avoid it. That would be your best option. And there's a couple of options. You can take Martin Luther King Jr. Drive and you can get around this. Uh, you can also uh, get over to WW White and that'll get you around some of these, uh, some of the slowdown. But be aware that this is, again, going to be here a while longer and all traffic is getting on the service road and probably having to wait at that light as well. So that's the, the reason that the traffic is so slow at this point. 
As we look at the uh, picture, bigger, bigger picture here, and we go north, there are a couple of incidents, but these are off the major freeways, so not causing any real issues there. But uh, up around uh, Wetmore and Thousand Oaks, there was a report of an accident, and just off I-10, just to the west of I-10, an accident there. But we're going to keep our eyes on what's going on at I-10 East. Still a big problem this morning and some big slowdowns, guys. Been busy since we went on the air this morning I at 430. Know. And we'll be checking back with you in a little bit. Thank you, Justin. Got it. But for now, a hoodie definitely at the bus stop. Yes, light jacket, uh, especially as we've been saying all week long is in parts of the uh, hill country with these temperatures that are on the, the coolish side. 63 this morning, that's where we're standing right now. We may fluctuate a degree or two and a good looking sunrise this morning. Then we are going to have more in the way of some high clouds working their way in here later on this afternoon. 88 high temperature, which is a couple of notches above normal after starting off just a couple of degrees below normal. All right, here is one of the cute pictures this morning. They're all cute, of course, but this little guy, little Poochie, that's his name, is all dressed up for Halloween. I love the dog spider costumes. Look at him. Is that his usual expression or is he kind of like Please get this off me. Mm, probably. <laughs> it, could, it could be the latter. <laughs> yes. He looks cute. So, hey, uh, you scan the QR code and uh, you can, uh, easy way to download and send us some of the uh, KSAC Connect pictures of your pooches or whatever the case may be. All right, mm, no glow yet. We've got to wait a little while. Sun doesn't come up till right around 7.30 this morning. And uh, temperatures, yes, like Steph was saying, jacket, hoodie, sweatshirt, 53, Comfort 55, Bernie Stage, Port SA at 63 and 60 right now in Seguin. And these numbers, we're still got humidity, dew point temperatures down below 60. That's always the number you get above that. And you really kind of start to feel the humidity. Um, yeah, it's still low, but look at that 58 right now in Helotus, 54, Randolph, 55, Stinson. So these numbers have gone up a little bit. 60 is the dew point up there right around Canyon Lake. And these numbers are up two, three, eight degrees compared to this time yesterday. And that will continue to be the trend has been saying for the past few days going into the weekend. Just a little more humidity coming on in here. Not fog up your glasses kind of humidity, but enough to notice 65 at 8 o'clock. A lot of sunshine first portion of the day. A few more high clouds as we get in past noon and getting up into the upper 80s and then more in the way of the high clouds as we go into dinner time and later on this evening and this is what we had yesterday. This darker shade right here, lower or less water vapor aloft in the atmosphere. Now more of it comes on in and that's going to mean, like I said, kind of that milky shade shade to the sky and then more in the way of some clouds, high clouds that will move on in here later on and going into this evening. 82 at noon, plenty of sunshine out there and then a high temperature today makes it up to 88 couple of degrees above normal, mostly sunny skies, and tomorrow we'll keep a lot of clouds around. A lot of those high clouds, it's kind of going back and forth with sunshine and clouds uh, over the weekend. Humidity will continue to creep, you know, one or two degrees, and notice the high temperatures, 85 being the normal high, three, four, almost five degrees above normal, low temperatures about two, three degrees above respective normals. Cool and morning. notice how there's not a drop of rain on there. Not, not a single yet. drop. Not yet. Okay, mm -mm. so fingers crossed for later on. <sighs> You're going to keep them crossed for a while, it okay. looks like. Thank you, Mike. 620, 63 degrees. And a new tech company helping Spotify make some big changes. We're going to tell you how it wants to give users a better experience. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. Water is one of nature's four elements, and after a spirit's long journey back to the world of the living, they may be thirsty. So leaving out a pitcher and a glass of water is a nice touch. It can be placed on the altar's second level beside your other offerings. A clean soul is a happy soul, so your loved one may want to wash up. Many ofrendas will also include a basin, mirror, and a bar of soap. In this case, they're placed on the bottom level with other elements of purification. When I build my ofrenda, I make sure that I pour the water in a beautiful glass or cup, just as I would for any other special guest entering my home. This is the moment. 
for a treatment for moderate to severe eczema. Sebaco, FDA approved. 100% steroid free. Not an injection. Sabinko is a once-daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments. And Sabinko helps provide clearer skin and less itch. Sabinko can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are prone to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent blood clots, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers. Serious heart-related events and blood clots can happen. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with jack inhibitors. This is the moment, but we've only just begun. Speak with your doctor about Sabinko today. An innovative from Pfizer. In your GMA first look, have you made holiday travel plans? Well, experts say now may they be the best time to book your holiday airfare. That story and more coming up at 7 a.m. right here on Case at 12. Spotify has purchased a company it says will help weed out hate speech and other harmful content on podcasts. The tech company Kinzen, based in Ireland, uses machine learning and human knowledge to identify problems. The companies have been working together since 2020 to try to limit election misinformation. Time now, 625, and it's 63 degrees out there. Ahead in our next half hour, cleanup underway after a fire on San Antonio Southwest side. We'll tell you how many people are now without a place to live this morning. And our coverage continues this morning from Uvalde, where parents are voicing their frustrations over a controversial hire at Uvalde CISD. Katrina Weber is staying on top of this story and will join us with a live report. Traffic is still being affected by an earlier car fire at I-10 near WWY. This is where things are still really slowing down. Justin has been tracking this all morning. He will get you updated. we will see if this improves in the next few minutes. We'll be right back. Outside with Live Cam, if you're just now waking up or joining us, we're waiting for the sun to come up. Those days are definitely getting shorter. 63 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. We'll see if the forecast continues in a similar way for the next uh, couple of days. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is October the 6th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we hope that weather continues, but Mike says we're trending a little bit up. A little yes. bit up. A little bit. Yeah. Each and every day, the humidity is just, you know, just a couple of ticks here in the morning. Not like you walk outside and glasses fog up or anything. And then high temperatures are going to be staying on the, the warmish side as we go on into the next uh, few days, the weekend, as well as next week. No glow of the sunrise as of yet. It won't be long, though, and temperature right now is still holding at 63. This number, dew point, uh, is still below 60. That's what you like to see, but it has gone up a little bit compared to yesterday. Uh, 56 Ball Verde, 52 Comfort. These numbers look almost where they were yesterday, um, up a degree or two. We did bottom out yesterday at 60. I think we're going to stay but right around 63 this morning. Mold, ragweed are both on the low side and uh, clear. Pleasant, pleasant to coolish. Light jacket, sweater, sweatshirts, good idea. And then sunny skies. Few clouds will then work their way in here. A lot of high clouds, and they'll thicken up, especially around dinner time, going into the evening hours. We're going to be in the upper 80s today and tomorrow. A lot of clouds around here, then just sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds over the weekend. Still upper 80s, a hint more humidity. And next week. Bit more in the way of some uh, sunshine around here and we stay definitely on the warm side. Notice how one word that's missing in there. Rain. We'll get all the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Justin, still big problem? Still there, still there. It's been there since around 4 o'clock this morning. We've been watching this incident on I-10. So this is the camera at WW White and I-10. We're looking back to the east and there is the slowdown. So this is all the traffic exiting onto the service road along I-10. And this is in both directions. We're looking at the eastbound lanes here, but westbound lanes also uh, being forced to exit. And that was due to a crash that happened earlier at the Houston Street Bridge. So there's Houston Street right there. And that car went in between the east and westbound lanes down the overpass, caught fire, and then you have to worry about the integrity of the bridge. And I think that's what they're looking at with any sort of heat or anything like that. You got to be really careful, make sure that uh, traffic going over that bridge is safe. So you see the backups now, they're really starting to pile up. So this red color uh, represents almost standstill traffic, and that's going in both directions since uh, you're being forced to exit, exit onto the service road in both ways, both directions. 
And it looks like police are directing traffic to get you through that light at East Houston Street, but it's still going to be a big issue. We have some video to show you of the incident, and you can see just how bad that accident was, that crash there at Houston Street, and that uh, that did catch fire. The person in that car was injured and taken to the hospital. We don't know any updates past that, but they can see they're putting water on that, uh, that crash, and it uh, is causing some big, big issues this morning. So that is the latest. Expect some delays to continue for a while longer, guys. Thank you, Justin. We continue to follow a developing story out of Uvalde. CNN is reporting that Uvalde CISD has hired a former DPS trooper who was at Robb Elementary during the shooting. That report also says that Crimson Elizondo is among the troopers under investigation for their actions or inactions back on May 24th. As of this morning, Elizondo does appear on the Uvalde CISD website. She is listed as a member of its seven person police department. However, body cam video from May 24th appears to show Elizondo outside the school. CNN says she arrived just two minutes after the gunman went inside. These clips were released by Uvalde's mayor. Now, she does not appear to have on body armor or have a long rifle. Body cam video also shows her inside the school during the 77 minute mass shooting. Elizondo is reportedly one of seven DPS officers referred to the Office of the Inspector General. The official referral made in July says those officers were identified for, quote, actions which may be inconsistent with training and department requirements, end quote. DPS has not officially identified those officers. We are going to have more on this coming up a little later in the newscast. And new this morning, San Antonio police are looking for the person who shot and killed a man overnight. This happened on the city's east side at East Houston and North Polaris Street. That is where officers say they found the man laying in the street. He died at the scene. As of right now, no arrests have been made. Also new this morning, cleanup underway after a fire on the southwest side of town. It happened on West Mayfield near Bynum Avenue and Southwest Military. That's where crews say flames broke out next to a freight container that was converted into an apartment. While two people are without a home, no one was hurt. No word yet on what sparked the fire. This morning, we now know what led up to a large police presence at the Alizan Apache Court. San Antonio police say it started with an attempted traffic stop and a stolen car. The driver took off, but SAPD's helicopter found it at the Alizan Courts. Officers dressed in tactical gear ordered eight people out of an apartment. I believe this happened yesterday. Our cameras were there as they walked out with their hands above their heads, were blowing faces because some of them were eventually released. This morning, we are still working to find out how many people were taken into custody, their charges, and what police found, also who owns the stolen vehicle. And some viewers may find this next video disturbing. This morning, a 17 year old shot by a San Antonio police officer is still recovering while the officer who shot him is out of a job. This happened Sunday in the parking lot of a McDonald's off of Blanco Road near West Avenue. The public, including people who knew that teenager, are getting their first look at the body camera video. Probationary officer James Brennan, after only seven months on the job, has been fired for the shooting of Eric Cantu. The police chief says Brennan did not follow protocol. The teen's former supervisor at the wash tub watched the video for the first time with us. He looks scared. He looks terrified. Uh, he doesn't know what's going on. Like he was just in his car eating that right there. Uh, just, that personally didn't look right to me. That former supervisor tells KSET that during the three month period they worked together, his impression of Gantu was that he is funny, respectful and hardworking. And now to a developing story, a deadly shooting at the University of Arizona campus. A former student is accused of shooting a member of the school faculty. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert. This morning, a professor at the University of Arizona is dead after being gunned down on campus. The subject wearing the oversized shirt and shorts shot a head of department and then fled. Police say around 2 p.m. they got a call that this man, 46-year-old Murad Dervish, a former student, had entered a building on the Tucson campus. The caller claimed they recognized Dervish and knew he was not allowed in the building. While en route to the scene, police say reports came in about a shooting and the gunman fleeing. We have a subject saying he possibly saw the suspect southbound on foot 
The victim, a professor in the hydrology department. We feel so incredibly bad for, for the professor's family, friends and colleagues, and our, our hearts really just go out to them. The suspect was later taken into custody during a traffic stop more than 100 miles away. The attack putting campus security in the spotlight. There aren't going to be metal detectors in in classrooms. There are not going to be metal detectors in buildings by and large. We do have metal detectors at major events, but that's probably not happening in, in all the buildings on campus. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. And we return to Uvalde now where parents are giving their school district more than just a piece of their minds. They are going to use their bodies in a protest, blocking off access to the school administration building. Now, the parents are upset about the latest action by the district in the wake of the Robb Elementary School shooting. That's right. We told you a little bit about this earlier in this broadcast. Katrina Weber is live in Uvalde this morning. And Katrina, we know the protest was set to begin at 630. What are you seeing out there this morning? Well, we already do have some parents here. They're starting to block off the entrances to this administration building. Uh, they also have brought signs. They're out there ready to protest. Now, we spoke to one woman who actually brought a visual display. She has backpacks that she has placed all along the sidewalk in front of the building. And she says those represent the 19 children and two teachers who were killed in that shooting. Now, this group is upset, really outraged about reports that the school district has hired a woman named Crimson. In Elizondo. The CNN story showed body cam video of Elizondo at Robb Elementary the day of the school massacre. She reportedly is a former DPS trooper who's under investigation now for not responding properly during that shooting, which killed those children and teachers, the 19 children and two teachers. The CNN report states that Elizondo has been hired now to work as a member of the school police department here in Uvalde, and parents say that's just adding insult to injury. And that was infuriating to find out. She was one of the first ones on scene and she did nothing because it was not her child in there. And Nikki Cross, you just saw there, lost her son, Usa Usaya Garcia, during that shooting. She's one of the people out here right now. And uh, she says that they don't know what is going to happen once the school administrators start to arrive, but she's prepared for anything, including possibly being arrested. Reporting live in Uvalde, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, families of the Robb Elementary victims continue to share their stories. The daughter of fourth grade teacher Eva Morales is speaking for the very first time. When I heard that she jumped in front of her students, I think my first thought was, of course, of course she would. That's just her. That was just who she was. 23-year-old Addie Ruiz says her mother was a hero long before May 24th of this year. Four months later, Ruiz is advocating for stricter gun laws here in Texas. And our coverage of the new developments in New Valley continues online as this is a story we are following closely. Head over to KSET.com for real-time updates. Well, back here in Bear County, voters got a chance to hear from both Bear County judge candidates at a forum yesterday. Pa former County Commissioner Trish DeBerry and former Judge Peter Sakai faced off. They took on issues from the economy to problems at the Bear County Jail. Each also gave their vision of transportation in Bear County and the need to changes as this county's population grows. If you scan this QR code, it will take you to the article where you can watch the full forum along with links to register to vote both online and via mail. The deadline for that is coming up fast on October 11th. Well, right now, 641, 62 degrees. And just ahead, we are giving you five questions you should ask yourself every day to check in on your mental health. And welcome back, it is 644. It is Mental Health Awareness Week, and today is National Depression Screening Day. Max Massey has questions you should ask yourself every day to take a mental health self-inventory. Work stress, money problems, society issues. There are some very serious challenges going on in our society right now, and it sort of makes sense that people would feel more anxious about it. Experts say checking in on your mental health is beneficial, just like a physical health checkup. You can perform a mental health checkup by asking yourself these questions every day. How am I feeling today? What's been worrying me lately? Am I providing my body with its basic needs? What am I doing to bring myself joy? 
Who do I have in my corner? We have to look deep inside, I think, and ask ourselves, um, honestly, what am I struggling with? And it's not often the obvious thing. For symptoms that last longer than two weeks, get professional help. And right now on KSAT.com, you can read stories and find resources about mental health and wellness. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. KSAT is hosting a community town hall today at 2 p.m. for domestic violence. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and we'll be talking about the connection between domestic violence and mass shootings. The town hall will be moderated by our KSAT anchor and reporter, Courtney Friedman, and hosted by the Collaborative Commission of Domestic Violence. The town hall will be streamed on the KSAT Plus app. We have been staring at the same trans guide shot all morning long, and it really hasn't improved at all much, Steph. No, it actually looks worse there in I-10. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin Horn. Well, with uh, both sides of the freeway closed down here at I-10, I think it is uh, going to get worse before it gets better as the morning commute starts to pick up. So we're looking at the WWI camera. We're looking back to the east, and this is inbound traffic coming in on I-10, and you can see it is completely stacked up. So we're down to one lane. Everyone is having to exit. And that's because the Houston Street Bridge is closed down. We had a crash there earlier. The car went between the eastbound and westbound lanes and caught fire. It was down there in the overpass uh, where the columns are. So they're, they're having to check the integrity, I would imagine, of that bridge. And this is probably why it's shut down as they clean up that crash. I want to show you that traffic is backed up at least a mile when you're talking about the inbound uh, inbound lanes here westbound and then also eastbound it's backed up more than a mile at this point and i believe there's another minor accident associated with that stack up back to the uh, back to the west there so this is the big issue again houston street bridge closed down uh, because of that crash and then we also have a stalled car here along 410 so this is adding insult to injury if you're deciding to get off on 410 to avoid this you're going to run into some traffic and a uh, big slowdowns now because of this stalled vehicle so this is this whole area is one you'll want to avoid 410 i-10 if you're heading inbound on I-10, just uh, try to find an alternate route because uh, this will likely be here for a while longer. And uh, we'll go out to Transguide one more time. And you can see that traffic is now at a standstill. More headaches throughout this morning commute, Mike. Boy, not good news. Thank you very much, sir. And of course, we're going to keep uh, keep you updated on that throughout the rest of the morning. All right, here we go. Another great picture from Skywatcher. What do camping skeletons cook over a campfire? S'more bones. <laughs> S'more. S'more bones. So, OK, we're trying to figure out I, I can't find him. Where's the dog? Maybe hiding behind the guy that's lying down like back there, in, in the back tent. in there. Yeah, I, I can't tell. Uh. Great or, shot, though. Or maybe he's on vacation today. Okay, and 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 now when you see these, it's like, okay, what are they going to come up with tomorrow? <laughs> so, anyway, thank you very much, of course, for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Send in some of your uh, Halloween decorations and, of course, the, the pet pics. There's the glow of the uh, morning sunrise out there. 63 in town, 65 in Lotus, 54 Bernie Stage, 55 right now in Bandera. And uh, we're going to have beautiful sunrise, lots of sunshine, especially the first portion of the day. Then we're going to start to see kind of a milky shade to the sky, more high clouds working their way on in here. We'll make it up to 82 two at noon and then continue up through the 80s, topping off at 88 later on this afternoon. And again, by dinner time and then into the evening hours, more of those higher clouds will cover more of the sky as we go into the evening hours. Again, tropics, quick check. First of all, tropical depression number 12 is pretty much just fizzling on out. And then there is this batch of clouds right there off the northern coast of South America. Good chance it is going to develop into something, but the forecast still has it moving just about straight to the west and heading in toward Central America, not coming up into the Gulf or anything. So here's what's going on. High pressure still basically dominating us, but there is a, a low out here to the west of us, and that's what's throwing in some of that high level moisture. And that's why we're going to keep some of those high clouds around not only later on tonight, tomorrow, and then in through the weekend. So the high remains in the Gulf of Mexico. That low just sort of sits out there and spins to the west of us. This is not a fall type weather pattern whatsoever. Got some troughs that are trying to move into the uh, the Great Lakes. And as we go on into the end of at least with this graphic forecast period, huge, huge trough developing. This would be by next week up there around the Great Lakes. Now, whether everything moves into the right position to get a front coming through here, that's sort of a wait and see type situation, but that's a 
that's a doozy of a trough up there with some very cold air that's going to be moving into the Great Lakes. It'd be nice to get a little uh, shot of that, but still way too far down the road. 82 degrees at noon, sunny skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 88 later on today. A lot of high clouds will move on in here and then thicken up as the afternoon goes into evening hours. Tomorrow, 86, a lot in the way of those high clouds and upper 80s all the way through the weekend. A bit more humid, not anything too bad, but just enough to notice it if you're out in the sun too long. And then we stay in the upper 80s through the weekend into next week, mid 60s. So overall still two, three degrees above normal on the low end of things, four or five above normal high end of things. And we've noticed the clouds vary here or there depending on the day. Yeah, and, and again, it just feels those high clouds, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like low dark ominous clouds or anything like right. that. And no rain. No rain. Fingers crossed for later. Yeah, way down the road, maybe. Thanks, Mike. 651, 62 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow. On Native plant experts say now is the time to plant your Texas wildflower seeds. I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we'll take you to my garden. We we'll try out some steps that experts say may help you see more blooms this spring. Outside with live cam, enjoying the very beginning of a, a fantastic sunrise here over South Texas on your Thursday. It is October the 6th, and we'll be right back. Just about five till Ruby City is a contemporary art museum here in San Antonio that opened in 2019, and they are now ready to showcase their new installation. Today on GMSA at 9, Tiffany Huetas is going to introduce us to one of the local artists who worked on the piece and share the meaning behind the exhibit. Plus, we're going to continue to follow the very latest out of Valley with our Katrina Weber. And time now, 6.55. Let's check back with Justin Horn. Yeah, we still have that crash that was on I-10. It's closed down both the eastbound and westbound the lanes of I-10 uh, east of downtown. It's the Houston Street Bridge. Car caught fire. Uh, still some issues. They're still trying to clean that uh, crash up and check on that bridge. So here is uh, where we're seeing that right there. And backups are now pretty huge, uh, more than a mile in both directions. So this is just a place you want to avoid. We also have a stall up here along 410 that's adding insult to injury here. So slow going 410, I-10 as you come into downtown. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Does it look like it's more of a pronounced red orange glow this morning? It is absolutely gorgeous out there. 62 now in town, 63 Port of 60 out there at Randolph, 52 Comfort. Yeah, grab a jacket and won't need it by the afternoon. 88 high temperature, a few more high clouds uh, throughout the day and especially late this afternoon and this evening. A lot more tomorrow. Warm all the way through the weekend, above normal temperatures and a bit more humidity as well all the way uh, through the weekend. Those colors do look extra brilliant this morning. Yes. They do. Very Striking. <laughs> you guys have a beautiful day. We'll see you back here at 9.